All right, well, welcome back, everyone. Uh, my name is Pierre, and I'm a product specialist with Viva Select California. And I'll be following up Andrew's uh, presentation, where he introduced Pi and the concepts from a theoretical level. And we'll start going into the practical side of things and take a look at some case studies. And uh, since we have a lot of water and wastewater customers here today, I wanted to focus on a water customer success story. So for this presentation, I'll be talking about San Jose Water uh, Public Utility, Utility District, which is up in NorCal. <clears throat> so first, some background on their operations. Let's take a look at some numbers here. San Jose Water, they serve over 1 million people in the greater San Jose metropolitan area, in the Bay Area. And this is kind of a fun fact, but San Jose is actually a larger city by population than San Francisco. A lot of people don't know this. Um, so it kind of goes without saying that they serve a lot of people, right? And this translates to large infrastructure needs and large facilities as well. So you can see some of their numbers here. They have over, uh, you know, they have 100 pressure zones, 84 stations for groundwater extraction and inner zone pumping, over 200 booster pumps, which amounts to 27 billions of gallons of water that they move annually. It's a lot, yeah. So let's take a look at some more operational figures here. The cost of pumping all that water requires 40 million kilowatt hours of energy, which is pretty expensive, as I'm sure some of the water wastewater customers here today know. And this also amounts to a large carbon footprint. And I'll talk about why that's important a little later. Um, but unfortunately, their lack of traditional strong monitoring means that they had to resort to reactive maintenance to run their infrastructure instead of being preventative. And so this led to issues like system strain, service interruptions, and more costly repairs and replacement because they had to do so much on short notice to replace their equipment, right? And they actually had between 10 and 20 pump failures a year, which is a lot. And these inefficiencies add up pretty quick. So uh, on top of all that, and this is the reason I brought the carbon footprint, is they have a goal to reduce uh, GHG emissions by 50% from 2019 levels by 2030. So they have every incentive in the world to improve their monitoring pro processes. And another problem that they have is they have a data siloing problem. They're bringing in data from all these different data sources, right? From their physical equipment, their station flow meters, pressure monitors, and lever transducers to PG&E rate schedules, uh, PG&E billing data, uh, data from distribution systems, and pressure monitors. And the problem is all that data is siloed, right? It's scattered all over the place, which makes it pretty difficult to view all that data in context and understand what's going on. So they had an incentive to figure out a way to unify these data sources, right? So does that sound familiar? It does, right? Because that's what the Pi system does. And so in comes the Pi system to save the day. So Andrew talked about some of these concepts earlier, but Pi was able to provide the single source of truth that they needed for all of their data from these different disparate data sources, right? So they were able to bring in all this data from their scattered sources into the data archive, which is the historian component, like Andrew talked about. And then they were able to use the asset framework, right, to structure that data. That's the layer that sits on top of the data archive to provide context and organization to the chaotic data that's coming from all over the place. And then they were are able to use uh, the Pi visualization tools like Pi Data Link, the Excel add-in, and Pi Vision, which Andrew showed a demo about uh, earlier. So a quick note on asset framework and how they're doing this. Uh, so this is how they're structuring their data inside of asset framework. They're using several different parent-child relationships, right, and setting up the hierarchy between these relationships where it makes sense and it allows them to strategically organize their data and associate them with certain assets. So they have station assets, pressure zone assets as the top layers, and sublayers uh, that include booster pumps, well pumps, tanks, reservoirs, and they were able to associate attributes to those sublayers, right, which you can see on the right side, like power, flow, and status. And so this hierarchy allowed them to organize and structure the data in a way that made sense and also save on engineering efficiency because they were able to create that structure one time for each station, each pressure zone, 
and then deploy it strategically for every instance of those layers. And Andrew talked about the notification service. So here's kind of a practical application of it. The way they're using notification service in Pi is, for example, right, for their pumps, they set up th uh, certain thresholds. For example, they have efficiency thresholds, pump degradation thresholds, so on and so forth. And once those uh, thresholds are exceeded, right, then they're getting notified through the email service. So this really helps them because this is all automated and they don't have to go in and actually check the status of uh, the efficiency of the pumps or the pump degradation. All of that is sent to them automatically through email, thanks to the Pi notification service. So on this slide, let me see if I can play this video here. This is an example of their Pi Vision dashboards. And there's a video here that I'll play. So, oh, by the way, uh, I have a, uh, a station set up in the other room where we're showing the Pi Vision water demo that Andrew showed earlier. So you guys are welcome to swing by at lunchtime or during the second break to check it out. But here's an example of their specific dashboards inside of Pi Vision. So this is, I believe, we go back a little bit here. This is, um, they have the title of the dashboard on the left here, the 17th Street Station. And so here's where they're monitoring not, their, not just their SCADA data, but other data like you can see they have weather data, they have the PG&E info, and they're able to build this dashboard that takes all that data into context and provide the single source of truth, right? So now instead of having to go to this, this database to see uh, you know, the PG&E info or, or go to the weather service app to see the weather info, you can see all of that on the same page inside the dashboard inside of Pi Vision, right? So this really helps to optimize their, uh, their processes because now they're able to go to a single place and view all that data in real time or historically as well. So let's skip ahead a little bit. I won't play the whole, full, the whole video, but here's another, uh, hold on. Let's see if I can skip forward. It's always tough uh, playing these videos. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's playing, but again, if you guys want to go check out some example of dashboards, I have it set up in the other room, right? I'm showing the water world demo that Andrew showed earlier, so you guys are welcome to um, to come check it out and see some more examples of uh, of dashboards that you can create inside of Pi Vision. Uh, but next, I wanted to show you guys examples of reports that they were able to generate using the other client tool, which is Pi Data Link. So again, this is the Excel add-in that Andrew mentioned earlier, where you can easily extract the tags from your Pi database, from the data archive or asset framework, if you choose to do that as well. You can extract the tags and then quickly build out the reports that you want um, using uh, you know, easy to use wizards that uh, Pi Data Link provides for you. And so here's some examples of the reports that you can generate. Here is uh, all pumps attribute average uh, report where they're monitoring, um, let's see, I can't, you can't really read it, but the average value of the pumps, the time running states, so on and so forth, as well as which inlet zone these pumps are associated with. So they're able to generate a report and view the pump degradation metrics of those pumps. Here's another example. And, you know, I don't know if you guys use Excel daily, but I've used Excel in the past. And I, when I look at this report, I think this is gonna be impossible to generate myself. It's gonna take forever. I gotta use these Excel macros. I'm gonna mess it up, right? But with Pi Data Link, it's really easy, right? Because you can't really see it here, but there's a wizard on the right side embedded inside of Excel where you can just select the tags, select the type of report you wanna generate, and it does all of this really easily and really quickly. So we talked about how they're using Pi, right? So now let's talk about how successful the implementation was for them, right? So you can see with the, uh, the metrics that we see here with the estimated savings that it was very successful and they were able to save $540,000 per year by monitoring the pumps during peak and non-peak state. So that's a lot, right? And this led to uh, more efficient pump prioritization as well. And so they were able to increase their uh, most efficient pump uh, prioritization by 2% efficiency which led to savings of $210,000 per year. And earlier I mentioned the carbon footprint goal, right? Which was really important to them. And uh, so here's the numbers and how they were able to help achieve those goals. They saved 564 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. 
by implementing Pi. So just to wrap this up and reinforce the overall results and the value that Pi brought them, again, it allowed them to dissolve their data silos and solve the data uh, siloing problem that they had by providing a single source of truth where they aggregate all that data from PG&E, from the, from the weather service, and from SCADA into a single source of truth so they can view it all in context with each other. And they were able to monitor their performance in real time to generate the appropriate alerts through the Pi notification service that I talked about, automatic email alerts. They were able to produce and export their performance data through Pi Data Link and Pi Vision and view that data from anywhere. Because like Andrew said, if you set up uh, Pi Vision uh, with the right web authentication, you can view it from any web browser, right? So you can access that data easily without necessarily being on your SCADA network. And they were also able to you know, use these tools to prioritize uh, their pumps and their stations based on the feedback of this real-time data. And the expected ROI, because they just recently implemented this, um, their return on investment will be less than one year. So for them, it was a very successful implementation. And I understand that we have a lot of water and wastewater customers here today. So um, hopefully, this kind of rings a bell with you guys and shows you guys specifically how Pi can be implemented um, for your own, your own infrastructure, right? And the asset framework that you guys saw earlier, maybe something you guys will be able, you guys will be able to implement something like that too for your own stations and your own pressure zones, right? Um, so yeah, uh, I try to keep this a little short. Hopefully I didn't talk too fast, but um, yeah. So uh, thanks everyone and I'll hand this off to Sharona.